This acrylic pumpkin painting step-by-step -step acrylic tutorial will show you how to create a textured background using paint scrapers and sponges, how to mix an orange and how to apply paint using a wet on wet technique where you will blend most of your colors directly on your canvas. Once you have the basic shape of your pumpkin with some play of light and dark, then I'll show you how to build and layer your colors to create a vibrant pumpkin painting. This is perfect for the classroom, date night, paint night at home. All you need is your set of brushes, your canvas, and I'm using ultramarine blue, phthalo green, red, chrome yellow, titanium white, and I mix my own orange. Feel free to use whatever color scheme you would like with your background and your pumpkin. If you love learning about art, hit that subscribe button and support this public school teacher's side hustle. Let's chat about the materials you will need. I am painting on a canvas board and I'm using a plastic palette with a lid. All of my materials will be linked in the description box. I'm going to create a textured background so you could use paint scrapers, a sponge, balled up paper towels, pieces of cardboard, the options are endless. You will need your favorite brand of acrylic paint, and I'm going to start focusing on my background first. Pick colors that work together because you will be blending them together to create your background. Also pick colors that contrast orange. So I'm sticking to cool colors here. I have two different blues and a green. My goal with this painting is to create a really fun textured background, and I'm going to play around with these paint scrapers that I purchased. I'll put the link in the description box, but you do not need these to make this painting. You could make a textured background with a plastic fork, with a balled up paper towel. You could even paint with your hands, have your pet walk across it. You could take a sponge and you could also just paint a background. I always like to stay away from just a solid color and I do like to blend and mix, which is why with this textured background, picking colors that work together is really important. So I'm adding a little bit of that green in the corners. And since I've never used these scrapers before, I'm just gonna play around, make a mess and scrape my textures, seeing which ones I like the best. I do know acrylic paint is pretty forgiving, so if I don't like what I do, I can let it dry and do a second coat. And if you want your colors to not mix together, let's say I wanna put like a bright pink on top of this, I could let the first layer dry and then do a second layer with colors that you wouldn't wanna mix with the base colors. Since my colors were so similar, I thought I'd play around with putting a little bit of white paint directly on the scraper and dragging that across the paint to see what happens. The name of the game here is to have fun, let loose, and experiment. I didn't get quite as much white as I wanted, so now I'm going to put it directly in the area I want it and drag my scraper from there, creating a light area. I do like how this contrasts, but I know I need to kind of tone it down a little because the pumpkin is really the subject. This is just the fun textured background. So I'm going to go back to the blue in the corner. Let's try this little scraper and keep on experimenting. Speaking of experimenting, I decided to try out the good old fashioned sponge technique as well, which is a common technique I use when creating backgrounds with my students. And this is a really fun way to tone down that white a little bit, make it blend. This is a wet on wet technique, so the green and the blue are mixing with the white, which is a really fun way to create a little bit of depth. Now I'm gonna go back and get that texture back in there. And I think I'm almost at the point where I need to kind of stop and let it dry. I'm going to sketch my pumpkin in pencil over my dry textured background. And I know what you're thinking, it's very hard to see. You could do this with a white colored pencil. Um, and if you've never drawn a pumpkin before, I do recommend doing a few practice sketches before you draw it on your canvas. And if you Google simple pumpkin drawing or pumpkin clip art black and white, that'll give you a simplified version to draw from. And if you're an advanced artist, get a pumpkin right in front of you and draw it from life. Now to paint the pumpkin. I'm going to make my own orange and I'm using this craft paint. I'm using the same Blick acrylic. Oops, got some on my canvas and I'm gonna mix my own orange. Now you can make your own orange if you would like or you can pre-buy it, it's totally up to you. But orange is easy to make, it's a combination of red and yellow and you will need more yellow than red or just make sure that the yellow um, maybe mix a smaller amount of red to your yellow to create a nice beautiful pumpkin orange. Once you are happy with your orange, paint each segment as a shape using just the same orange. You will be able to see your background, at least you will if you're using a thinner paint like me, and that's good. You don't want your background to not have a relationship with the subject. 
I am using a flat brush for this one and I'm just painting kind of in a C shape. So on the left hand side of the pumpkin, I'm doing C's that get bigger and bigger as they go out. The center segment is going to be more of like an elongated oval shape and then backward C's will expand from there. The key here is to work not too quickly, but fast enough so that your paint does not dry because we're gonna be mixing our yellow and our highlight directly to your paint. If you're an advanced painter, you might not sketch your pumpkin at all and just directly paint. Think of drawing with your paintbrush instead of a pencil, but my students get really nervous when I ask them to do that. So sketching is probably good if you have not done tons of painting before or if your confidence is a little low. I'm also going to use the same orange for the stem because the green behind it makes it a very nice brown color. I'm putting white on my brush and I'm going to paint each segment again and this is going to create a lighter orange using the wet on wet technique. That means your wet paint is mixing with your wet paint directly on your canvas or whatever surface you're using and you're not pre-mixing on the palette like I did with the orange. So you can see because the orange paint is not all the way dry yet, it's being like re-energized with this white paint. The yellow is kind of finding its voice and this is making a nice highlighted area and a shadow because I'm leaving a small gap and then that orange area that I'm not painting over creates a nice indention. This is a really fun, loose way to paint. I know it can be scary to not mix and do it perfectly on your palette at first, but with this, we're doing a fun textured background, loose painting. It doesn't have to look super realistic and you can certainly go crazier than me with your white. This is really lovely. And I'm gonna go back in and mix a little yellow and do the same technique. So now I'm directly mixing on top of that um, white mixed with the orange. So it's a tint of orange. I'm doing yellow mixed with white and that's giving it a little more nuance of color and a little bit more yellow going on. Notice I'm painting each segment separately and I'm still holding true to the shape, that C shape that kind of changes on either side. I want it to look lighter on the top so you can see I'm putting a second layer of that yellow mixed with white on the top of the pumpkin like the light is shining there and that's where the highlight is. Speaking of highlight, add a little bit more white. So instead of relying on more yellow, and I haven't cleaned my brush at all, add some white to the brush that already has yellow on it. Go over those shapes again to create your light source. Now mine's more on the top of my pumpkin. Yours could be in the center. You could put your light source wherever you would like. And if you look at images of pumpkins, either in person or online, you'll see that the light sources can change. Now, so it's not so blocky, I'm going to take a clean dry brush and blend this slightly back into the orange that I painted first that's getting more dry. Now I'm gonna jazz things up a little bit and add some red. I want it to look like the red is kind of in a shadowed area. It's not blending as much with the orange because that paint is drying, but the area where I left it orange, I'm going to add a little bit of red directly to it so it creates a reddish, reddish orange area. So it's like the yellow and white is the high point of the pumpkin segment. And then as it curves in, that is going to be the darker or the more um, red orange area. Now I'm going to pay a little attention to my stem and I'm gonna paint a little bit of that green on top of the orange that when it dried, you could see how brown it looked. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that mixed orange and this is gonna create kind of a green, but a little bit of brown stem. And then the fun part is I'm gonna blend directly those white squiggly lines. That was so much fun. It gives it a little bit of movement and those lines give it the nice texture that a pumpkin has. Now, if you don't like your first approach, let it dry or smush it all together and try again. The beauty of acrylic paint is you can do it many times before you get it right. Now I'm going to add a slight shadow underneath my pumpkin using the same blue that I used to create my background. Now this is not a realistic painting at all, but I do want it to look like it's kind of resting on something. I don't want it to look like it's just floating. So I'm taking a very small pointy brush and I'm adding just a slight blue shadow that also helps the edge of where the pumpkin stops and the background begins. I'm gonna then take my blue and think about shadows in the pumpkin itself. So on one edge of the stem, and then I know I added a little bit of red into the area 
um, where the pumpkin segment goes in, but typically a shadowed area is a cool color. So the red is a little bit to give it a little more variety with the orange, and I'm gonna blend blue in that area as well. You might notice that I am mixing it directly into some of the red that I added. That is making a violet, and since a shadow is usually a cool color, the red is there to give that variety of orange, and then you have blue, and then it mixes with the red to create a beautiful violet shadow. So when you're doing wet on wet blending, just be very aware of what colors you are using. Your pumpkin doesn't have to be orange at all. It could be hot pink, it could be grayscale, it could be whatever color scheme you'd like. Just make sure you're aware of the colors that you're using if you're blending wet on wet like I'm showing you. You can also see some of the background shining through, which I love because it creates color harmony between the textured background and the pumpkin. I loved that violet shadow so much in the pumpkin itself. I'm gonna mix some red directly onto the blue shadow I created, dip my brush into blue again, and then that way the shadow has a little bit of red, a little bit of blue, a little bit of violet, and that beautiful green texture popping through. I'm also throwing some of that green, the phthalo green that I'm using on my palette to give it a really nice kind of brown, violet, blue situation. And I'm using this opportunity to touch up the bottom of my pumpkin. Now I'm gonna go back to my scraper. If you used a sponge, if you used a fork, if you finger painted, think about the texture of your background and I'm just pulling that blended color to create a shadow that's more cohesive with the background. Now that my paint has started to dry, I'm going to re-emphasize my highlights using a very small brush. I am using mostly white, a little bit of yellow might still be mixed in there. And I'm just going over some of those spots that I had my highlight, making sure that the gleam of the pumpkin is the way I like it. You might be more of a minimalist, but I love contrast in my works of art, and so I always kind of go back and play up with my lights and play up with my darks. I'm gonna go back and see if I can get a little bit more of a vibrancy with my orange. I do like that kind of neutral brown color that the light orange created when it dried on top of the dark background, but I wanna push my boundaries here with my vibrancy, and so I'm just gonna put a few lines. I'm gonna be painting in each segment at a time so that I can play up each of those colors that have dried a little bit darker. Depending on the brand of paint you use, you'll have different results as well. Some paint is a little thinner, some paint dries darker. The red craft paint dries very flat, which I kind of like, uh, but it definitely looks different when it um, is wet paint and then it looks very different when it dries. Speaking of dried, I went ahead and let my pumpkin painting dry one more time, and then I'm gonna go back and see if there are any details I wanna emphasize. If you're a minimalist, you've heard me say this before, you might prefer to stop right here. It certainly has a nice natural blended look, but I wanna amp up some of those pops of color. I'm really digging this uh, yellow that I'm putting back in, and I wanna do the same with my um, red and my blue, and I might sneak in a little bit of that green to give it a little bit more of an electrified look and a key in that background some more. So this is just white mixed with yellow on my brush. Now that my paint has dried, it's not blending wet on wet, so you wanna think about that when adding your paint color. Going back in with a little bit more of that red, and so now I wanna kinda of bump up that contrast, bump up the electrified look of the color, so it has a little bit more of just an interesting look to it. At this point, you can paint however you'd like. Maybe you wanna put polka dots on your pumpkin, maybe you want to make it into a jack-o'-lantern, but I'm just gonna go through and kind of relayer some of those colors that lost their voice a little bit when the paint dried. Putting a little bit of blue in there as well. I love the painterly effect that that creates, putting it in the stem. Thinking about shadow, thinking about light. And is this what a natural pumpkin looks like? Maybe not, but it is lots of fun. And the whole point of this painting is to learn how to mix my painting, my colors wet on wet, and to play around with a really fun fall subject matter. This isn't a still life. This isn't something that I wanna look hyper-realistic. I'm having fun blending my colors. Speaking of that, I'm going back in with my phthalo green, and I'm keying in some of those colors so it kind of pops on the pumpkin and it's like, oh look, that color's used in the background as well. So how do you know if you're finished? That's a lesson I have never learned. So if you figure it out, comment below so I can figure it out too. And I'm just gonna add one last little bit of white highlights. 
And I know that my colors are going to dry a little bit darker, so here it is, my textured background fall pumpkin painting. Thank you so much for sticking around and making art with me, and if you're interested in more tutorials, check these out. Find me on Instagram at thatartteacher underscore machado to see what my students are up to in my classroom, and my website thatartteacher.com has full-length lesson plans and student examples all for free.